Now I'm just going to throw out a couple of things here. One, Dad's treated shabbily. This was from a woman in Hoosick Falls who stated, the letters from Gordon Katz and Matthew Rich were very well put. I also do not endorse what Charles Collins did, but I can understand his frustration. And I believe that many of these dads are definitely being beaten dead to death by the family court system. I know of a few cases where the dads don't even have enough money left from their paychecks for food and heat for their homes. Some are in the process of losing their homes because they cannot pay the taxes in a mortgage. They can't go to a doctor or a dentist because they don't have enough money. This is what the family court is doing to fathers. They strip them of everything. They leave them with nothing. Then you have the Lawyers Fund pays out $5.7 million to 165 clients in, 19, in 2003. And it says, to, uh, a tribute to misconduct by only 748 former lawyers. There are currently 207,000 attorneys in New York. Oh my goodness, 207,000 of them. And yet none of them will fight for your rights. And there should be a lot more being refunded as I've documented the illegal imprisonments. These lawyers are not protecting their clients. This is one of the best ones yet, though. It deals again with our illustrious Court of Appeals judges who think they live on Mount Olympus. They think they're gods. They bought a building down in Albany across from the courthouse at a cost of $23 million they put into it. 113-year-old Romanesque revival building being lavishly restored by the judges for a jaw-dropping $23 million. Now it gets better. They're only in use it 66 days a year when the court is in session. They're spending 23, and then they said at the current rate, current lease means the building should be paid for by itself sometime around 2095. Why do these judges need a lavish apartment at a cost of $23 million in Albany? They don't. They're restoring it. You know, it's just absolutely ridiculous. And then you get this wonderful statement here. They're picking a new judge for uh, Littman, who is, thank goodness, off the bench. We'll discuss him in a little bit, too, and his corruption. And he and Bonaventure has the audacity to state, said that lists from the commission have been noticeably stronger since Kay became its chair. Yeah, stronger in learning how to strip you of your constitutional rights. Kay is not about to pick a judge for the Court of Appeals that's not willing to be corrupt and deprive the citizens of this state of their constitutional rights. And then you get a Bonaventure, oh no, this is Bellicose. He knocks people that criticize the court. We don't know what we're talking about. Insignificantly contextualized and too often uninformed. No, it's the public that's uninformed about the corruption in the Court of Appeals stripping us of our constitutional rights, as I've fully documented throughout this presentation. And then you have Littman stating he's going to extend the right to counsel. And they want more counsels and money to pay for and everything. I will tell you, these public defenders, in most instances, it's the attorney welfare system. They can't make it on their own, so they become public defenders. They only make $75 an hour, so why would I work hard for $75 an hour when I normally get $150 or $250 an hour? They can't make it. Again, Lippman was also involved stating that the family court was open, which was a lie. It's still closed in most of the counties. So, you know, 
and the new rules on public access to the court. This was his directive, Chief Judge Administrative John Lippman, in 97. The guy's a liar. He's corrupt. He's there to protect the corrupt system. Now, just one last thing before we go on to a new topic. There was a newspaper article, regional news out of the Sunday Gazette, and it was written by Meredith Cruz, who is the first reporter that actually gave me some credit. And this is what she stated. I'm just going to read it, just the front page. It was a two-page, there I am again. You can see I have my bulletin board. That's where I got the idea from it. I've been using it for years. I stopped doing seminars a long time ago, but it states, Charles Collins III has made threats of violence. No, I've never made any threats of violence. I was, that was dismissed. They were rhetorical questions. Accused judges of conspiracy and extortion. Absolutely, I have. Even set off a smoke bombs as part of his decade-long crusade against the state's family court system. Absolutely true. Now he may have found his most effective tool, yet legal seminars on divorced fathers' rights. In pub, and I'll tell you, I get as many, I get a lot of women at these seminars also. I don't discriminate. In public libraries and town halls from Glenville to Plattsburgh, as many as 50 people at a time come to hear the 44-year-old convenience store manager turned paralegal tell them how to argue their own custody and child support cases in family court. Even, on, even his arrest on criminal anarchy charge was allegedly setting off smoke bombs in a parking garage at the Empire State Plaza didn't stop the Troy resident. At the day after he posted the bail, Collins came to Saratoga Springs to a meeting of local chapter of the Father's Rights Association to offer advice. Once dismissed as a wacky conspiracy theorist, that's what the news media normally wants you to believe and the judges do, Collins now has many supporters in the local Father Rights movement, which is growing in numbers and volume as members become increasingly frustrated by what they claim is a corrupt and unjust system. I think I pretty well spelled that out in this. Collins won support because he offers help to men, and I do help women too. I can, a lot of them come to see me. They've referred friends to me. Are all broken men. Spiritually, they're broken, and financially, they're broken, said Kathy, a woman, a Saratoga Springs woman who didn't want her full name used because... Her lawyer told her it could jeopardize her child support case to be publicly associated with Collins. Charles is not a loony. He's a crusader. But some lawyers, judges, and other observers argue that the system isn't as unfair as Collins and other less radical members of the movement claims. It's not a radical movement. All we're doing is demanding our rights. That's radical. You're not supposed to demand your rights in New York State. And by telling people to represent themselves, he makes it more likely that they will uh, go up against the system and lose. They're losing anyway. And this lawyer, Lawrence M. Gordon, he's got a big firm. How come he's not defending his clients against these illegal court proceedings? The closed courtrooms. The denial of a jury trial. The lawyers aren't doing anything. They like to blame me that I don't know what I'm talking about. And then it goes on to even more. And it says even here, one attorney, he is now working on a bill that would make it a crime for one parent to deny court-ordered visitation rights to another parent. I've never seen that pass. It wouldn't pass. New York's a Democrat state. It's not going to pass anything. This was a Republican that put, was putting the bill forward. They don't believe in fathers having a say with their children. And we're going to get into that in a little bit. All documentation concerning Justice for New York videos can be found at justicefornewyork.com. There are also family court petitions concerning the right to a jury trial, petitions to vacate support magistrate and judicial hearing officer's orders, as they are issued in violation of the New York State Constitution. And there is also a demand for probation reports and psychological evaluations that the court orders, but the court orders that you can't read them or see them. 
that is a violation of your right to due process and equal protection of the law. They also order that the people preparing these reports do not have to testify and there is no accountability. This has to stop. Demand your reports so you can know what's being told to the court.